evening. I hope that you have enjoyed your meal, your lunch. Well, and I, was, and I will first of all want to thank you for being here in this, in this session about monitoring and, and social impact. As you are probably already know, social impact is a quite complex and holistic uh, topic. And it's really, well, there are a lot of items, methodologies, approaches that should be involved to really address what, has, what are the social impact or what is the social impact of our interventions, especially when we are using also MBA solutions in the context of urban regeneration uh, projects. Uh, the idea of this session is presenting you some lesser learned success stories or uh, main results of different projects that are uh, sisters project that are uh, Progireg, Urbinat and also Clever and we will try to do our best to, to provide you some insights or some ideas to inspire uh, other uh, the definition on other uh, monitoring strategies in terms of social impact. I would like to thank to all the panelists for being here and as you can see there well the, this session is planned to, to develop different presentations First, uh, I, will, I will start to, to break the ice a little bit. Uh, sorry for being the first, but it's a way to, to start in for, <laughs> for one place. Then I will open uh, the floor to, to uh, Gonzalo in terms of uh, Urbinat and also uh, uh, he is with Isabel Root. Uh, then Johannes Robert will present some interesting stories of the social impact in Hamburg, that is a clever city. Uh, in terms of Progireg, probably we cannot uh, have uh, the, the, the original or the planned uh, uh, present presentation. And perhaps Mais Jafari from Dortmund can cover this gap. Let's see if finally this is, this is possible. And we will close uh, the session with a presentation from Madrid that is uh, from a follower city of the, of the city's project that can provide us some interesting insights about the definition of monitoring strategies. So, um, well, the, the intention is uh, going through the different presentations. I will, I will try to, to get uh, some notes about the questions that we can offer uh, from my side to the panelists, but please take into account your, your, your own questions. And probably after the finalization of all the presentations, I will try to open a little bit more the, the conversation for, for us to have any kind of reflection. So I, I will start with the, with the presentation of the monitoring framework in Clever, how we deal with the social impacts. Uh, well, we are in the, in the last final conference of Clever project, but we are still dealing with gathering of the KPIs, all the data, and trying to, to, to say to the commission and to say to our uh, stakeholders in the project which has been our social impacts in, if our, in our interventions. But the, the main thing, and I think this is a common thing for all the projects that are dealing with MBA solutions, is why we should monitor the MBA uh, solutions per se. And this is because uh, we want to mainstream MBA solutions in urban planning, and we want the MBA solutions to, to be part of our urban designing processes. And on that sense, we have to build evidence around MBA solutions. We have to say our politicians, our citizens, that MBA solutions are better, that are uh, well aligned with different challenges that are facing by the, by the cities, not only in terms of climate adaptation, but also in terms of social variables. And, and that's why we need numbers, we need to prove that the MBA solution is better than other or, or great solutions, in fact. And, and well, this is uh, our, our main goals where we are monitoring MBS, is capturing data, gathering information to uh, build evidence around the effectiveness of this uh, type of solutions. In the Clever uh, Cities project and probably in the other uh, sisters project that I have mentioned before, we are dealing with urban regeneration. In any urban regeneration process, we are not only talking about mm, climate or environmental challenges that has been traditionally uh, considered in the, in the context of, of uh, projects that requires implementation in the Horizon 2020 project, but also with social. When we talk about urban regeneration, usually we are talking about social challenges. And in Clever, the, the challenges that we were facing with our interventions involves much more uh, interesting, complex, holistic, and really difficult to address items such as human health and well-being, that is really broad, uh, sustainable economy prosperity, 
social cohesion and environmental justice and citizen security. And we should prove that our interventions, the one that has been co-created with the local stakeholders in the different frontrunner cities, are good enough to deliver impact in these specific challenges. So it, this is a really big scope and it's really interesting, and then I'm going to, to talk about a little bit the lesson learned, how we can manage expectations between uh, the implementation, the realistic possibility of the implementation to deliver impact in this type of, uh, of items, and the, what our local stakeholders require and their needs. Nor normally there is a big gap between the realistic possibility of the interventions and the uh, expectations that the local stakeholder has have when we reach to them and ask them, what do you want for your neighborhood uh, to be achieved? One thing that really came to our mind from our uh, scientific point of view is delivering tools for monitoring the social impact. There are different methodologies. I'm not an expert in social impact, but, uh, but what I can see is that we have possibilities of doing observations, interviews, but we also think that questionnaires can play a key role. Why? Because um, when you uh, develop questionnaires that can be applied in different contexts with customization, but in different contexts, you can gather a lot of information. A big sample can be uh, used, can be considered. And this provides us lots of data in different uh, pilot interventions in different cities to really deliver the information that we are searching for. That is that our MBA solutions are good, to deliver social impact, mm? so creating like um, a big amount of data. Mm? Uh, this clever questionnaire is already available for other cities to be used. Uh, it's available, it's going to be available in our website and also uh, in, in one of our deliverables. And I do really invite you to, to look at the questionnaire and to get inspired by the items that we are considering. And, and just in case you are interested in applying a tool that has been already published and, and can be, can be uh, used by another city. This is one of our examples of tools. We should deliver tools for, to facilitate cities the, the monitoring of the social impact. Looking into the KPIs that our uh, Clever Cities project has selected in order to evaluate these challenges, there are rounds uh, of different type of indicators. I'm not going to go through them. This is just uh, an inspiring, uh, inspiring, some inspiring ideas. Hmm? But uh, it is true that the, when you look into, for instance, one of the challenges, like for instance, social interaction and cohesion, and then you go to the subtopic, you realize how complex it should be to analyze in a pilot intervention how to address these specific challenges. So uh, going uh, from the challenge to the subtopic and then to the specific IPI or metric is not very direct, direct and it's quite difficult to really identify the specific metrics that are good enough to uh, deliver the information that we are searching for, analyzing if the intervention has been good or accurate to address this kind of, of challenges. Hmm? These uh, are some of them. These are, are others, like uh, thermal comfort, for instance, that is uh, an environmental thing that can be measured, not only using sensors, but also uh, analyzing uh, the thermal comfort as it is perceived by the citizens. And well, this is uh, some ideas that came from, from the Clever project point of view. Hmm? Some of that can be uh, applied to another context, another not. So it's, it's quite difficult to co-create a monitoring strategy uh, in terms of uh, analyzing the MBS effectiveness. To close my presentation, I will go through the lesson learned in the, in the Clever project regarding how to build a, a monitoring strategy, not only for social impact, but for, for the impact of the MBS per se. And one thing that we have to take in, in our mind is um, using the already existing framework. I, in the session that was uh, held this morning, uh, in previously to the lunch, in this uh, room, in the same room, they talk about the uh, already existing framework, already existing list of KPIs, different tools. I, I think that it's quite important to look in, into what other projects has been done and what the European Commission has, been, has already published in terms of uh, monitoring frameworks. This is quite uh, interesting and, and using this scientific expertise uh, uh, to be applied. But it is 
quite important that using these standardized KPIs should be uh, in, the, in a specific local context. And probably some of them should be uh, customized and refined, uh, redefined in order to be applicable to our specific intervention. Um, uh, also, the already existing indicators or already existing monitoring uh, frameworks or uh, strategies in the cities could be also put into value, especially to define the baseline. And this is quite interesting because uh, cities are already gathering lots amounts of data that should put into value. Then, as I has mentioned in, in the first part of my presentation, the local expertise and the local expectations should be integrated and managed. So it's quite important to put uh, the, so, uh, the scientific staff and also the um, uh, citizens uh, in, a, in, the, in a dialogue in order to really um, find this kind of balance that is not uh, easy. And um, one thing that is also important is uh, identifying flexible monitoring solutions, perhaps mix, mixing uh, physical sensors with interviews, with questionnaires, with observations, with modeling. Let's be a little bit innovative in the way we monitor the different solutions because um, not always the same, um, the same uh, type of methodologies uh, are applicable. It depends a lot on the topic that we are addressing. Uh, as you already know, probably better than me, budget is always a, a problem. How we can finance the monitoring strategies in a long-term processes. This is quite uh, important to take into account. Uh, once these projects, uh, Clever, ProHIREG, uh, will, will finalize, uh, the, the intention is uh, to maintain some kind of monitoring activities through time. Because during the, time time, the lifetime of the project, we don't have enough uh, time to really analyze the realistic impact of the MBS solutions through time. So we should uh, find uh, monitoring solutions that can be affordable uh, in the long term period. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that is quite important is if we just uh, gather data, if we don't process this and adapt uh, the messages that we want to send with this impact assessment, then we are not going to reach our target audience. And perhaps using exactly the same data, we can uh, select what kind of narratives we want to tell depending on the audience. One for politicians, another one for citizens, depending on the story that we want to tell and also depending the impact we want to create in our, in our audience. So, well, uh, this is uh, my, my presentation regarding what we have been learning in, in Clever. I am sure that uh, in the session that is planned tomorrow about monitoring, that is going to be an open discussion with cities, probably some of these reflections will raise again. And I really invite you to, to be tomorrow again in this monitoring session, that it could be more an open discussion across the different cities. And well, thank you for your attention. And I will, I will open the, the floor to, to Gonzalo. And well, perhaps after the presentation, we can open the time for, for questions. Thank you, Gonzalo. Okay, so good afternoon. Thank you, Egon, to organize this session. It's great to be here in the Clever Cities event. As you know, we are a sibling project, what we call sister project. So we follow uh, more or less the same structure as Clever. Um, ah, you put? No. Yeah. Okay. So we follow more or less the same uh, strategies. The call was the same, so we need to, to go through all the steps. I've also engaged uh, several cities together with us. And uh, myself, I work at the uh, Center for Social Studies at uh, the University of Coimbra, uh, and we are the coordinators of, of the project. And, and for this session, we thought that it would be very interesting to bring uh, invite Isabel Hood to, to come to, to Hamburg with us because Isabel was involved uh, in the project uh, of Urbinat in Porto. So Porto is one of the leading cities, the f one of the front runners. And Isabel Hood was in the project since the first moment. 
you, you work uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the area, in the intervention area. Uh, in fact, with, uh, with uh, an association that became uh, our very important partner in the field. And this is very important that we have uh, residents, people that live in the neighborhoods where we, we are working in social housing neighborhoods, but we have also associations that are already doing a very long work with the communities and become partners of, of these projects. They, in fact, they are almost as, as one of the leading partners. Uh, so Isabel has here the double rule of being uh, participating in our activities, but also uh, uh, running also their own projects in the community. So I will do. I will start uh, the presentation explaining a little bit uh, Urbinat. I will not go in detail with the KPIs and the social impact, uh, uh, social and the monitoring uh, and evaluation structure. That's not my role in the project, but I think between the two of us, we'll explain a little bit how the project is aiming to achieve a social impact in, in the community. Mm -hmm. So we'll start a little bit with the, with the work that, that we did in this community in Porto. Uh, of course, taking in consideration the, the, um, the, the challenges of the, of the project to engage target groups to activate these living labs. So the living labs were very important to be, uh, uh, to be activated with the local community. So identifying the stakeholders that are already in place, the associations, the institutions that are there already working, inviting them to participate in the project, understand with the municipality what, are, what is already going on in the territory. And this was very interesting because uh, uh, we were working, for instance, with the environment department of the municipality but then we saw that the education has projects in the area, the urban planning has in process, social cohesion. So we thought we saw that, and, and they even don't, they didn't know each other. They didn't know that they were running projects in the same intervention area. So the project has this role of putting people in dialogue. So this is, I think, the best definition of living lab. It's when the laboratory is activated in the place with all the players that are uh, um, working in that area. So to pr promote an inclusive urban regeneration. Of course, this is a, a big channel, the shift in the, in the way uh, municipalities are running the urban regeneration process. We heard today a lot of stories how difficult it is to change the way of doing, to give the citizens and the local associations a, a, decision, make, a decision in this process and being part of the process during the first stage. So usually the users are the, the last ones to arrive to the territory, to the new interventions. So in these cases, the users, the, the residents are the first ones to be part of the project. So this is a real shift, shift in this process. Then to expand the NBS concept. I think this is a little bit what we all have been doing. Of course, we are, we are renaturing our uh, uh, public spaces, but we are also bringing other layers of the, um, uh, of, of, uh, that are also relevant for, for the public space. And of course, the social dimension is one of the most uh, uh, important one, is the ones that will uh, activate these, these uh, natural places. And, and this is, in fact, what the citizens are aiming to. They are aiming to appropriate these places and use them as they need and not as the planners think it's best for them. So we, 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 we introduced the, the concept, for instance, of uh, participatory NBS, of social economy NBS, uh, of, of uh, technological NBS solutions that are a little bit more uh, technological that require other, other levels of innovation um, so that we could uh, explore the, uh, the, the human side of, the, of nature in these solutions. Uh, so the co-design to an implementation is the phase that that we are uh, we are uh, we just complete the co-design and we are implementing uh, our solutions in the in the several uh, cities. So our cities are Porto, um, Porto, Nantes, and Sofia as uh, front runners. Uh, Hoytastrup, Brussels, Siena, Nova Gorica, and Ahmabad in Iran as uh, follower cities. Um, and uh, it's interesting to see how the, the citizens uh, explore the concept that we brought to the project in different ways. So we brought the idea that all the cities, uh, we challenged all the cities to develop a healthy corridor. So we didn't ask for specific NBS, 
we thought, please think about what could be uh, a corridor, like a pathway, like a green area, that could have an impact on, on, on your health and well-being. So it's a cluster of several NBS. Uh, and this is an image of the diagnostic where it was pretty much developed with the citizens in, in the field. This is several walkthroughs that we did with adults, with uh, people with, uh, with uh, specificities, with children, uh, with several groups, several uh, moments in the year to identify in place what had, could have impact on their lives. So this was very important. The other thing that was very important was to explain what is NBS. As Martin said, when we started these projects in 2018, most of us, we didn't know what was NBS in the, in the concept itself. But, and of course, the community even less. So we did, for instance, this exhibition with posters related with NBS, where children select, identified what were NBS that they knew and NBS they could have in their area. Uh, and then we move to a urban strategy where we start to identify the several solutions that the citizens want to, to bring to the, to the area. This is an area, in the case of Porto, that has several social housing neighborhoods. Uh, we thought that in the beginning we thought to intervene in the social housing neighborhoods, but the citizens immediately they said that there was a territory in between the neighborhoods that could be much more interesting because it was a territory they moved every day and all the paths were informal. They, they, they had to, to go there when it's raining, they took two pairs of shoes, when, when at night they took their phone to have some light. So they said this is the area to intervene. So uh, this became the old, also the intervention area, the identification of plots was made with the citizens. And then in the end, we arrived to a urban plan uh, landscape for uh, uh, projects for this area where we have several plots, several structures to implement the NBS that came uh, with the citizens. And that's what uh, Isabel is going to talk about. Is, is going, she's going to talk about one of the N these NBS, NBS that was implemented before the green structure is, was there. So the citizens said, okay, the project is great. We are here for already for two years, talking, talking, talking. We need to do something. And they decided to activate this social market. And Isabel took the lead on that. And she's going to explain this better than me. <laughs> Thank Sorry. you, Gonçalo. Hello. Um, I, I, I have to start uh, apologize. My poor English, it, uh, it seems good now, but as more I get enthusiastic with the idea, it will go, it will go much more Portuguese, port like Portuguese and English, so please apologize. I'll try to, to be on, on my two feet calm at, until the end. Um, also, thank you, Gonçalo and CES in Coimbra for this opportunity. To, to bring me here. I realized today a great thing about me. I'm not only the, the, the person that Gonçalo present me at the, the beginning, but I also a real person, more than you. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> so I won something today, <laughs> very, very strong. And, um, and I'm, I'm a real person because I had the opportunity to participate, to be involved uh, uh, in this co-creation uh, process. And, and uh, also, as I, had, I had a double uh, job here. I, I live um, very near the, this territory. I work every day for a long period of time in this territory. I still work there and I know the community. And uh, I have a social uh, project. I have to, to lead a social project for the same, almost the same period as Orbinet. So I will start uh, um, making your attention to this. It's very important to work with the things that are still are already there and that are uh, already moving there. So we were there trying to, to start a social intervention in the community, with the community, and uh, it also we had COVID. So you have to work the, with the good and the worst uh, uh, and in the same place and the same time. So we, we find very quickly that it, it was very 
useful to get a st strategic uh, collision, uh, a, a strategic union, and uh, uh, try to to be there, to be in the Urbinat sessions in the Living Lab and try to particip participate and try to understand what was co-creation. In 2019, when I started, I think, with you, uh, with all of you, the inv investigators, you, the investigators, me, the real person, didn't know what co-creation was. And um, we, th we already knew that participation was a key issue. Uh, having people active uh, voices, it's quite, it's, you have to start everything from there, but you, we didn't, didn't know how to co-create, how to share ideas and how to put it on design and put it on plan and put it on effect in, effectiveness, okay? So, in my social project or in the social project I was involved in, the market, because we work with un unemployed people and people that have a poor qualification for the market, um, the market, the idea of uh, having a market was uh, an activity that we thought on our planning. And when we start to talk about the intervention on this corridor or, or, or in this territory, we said we would like to have a market. Okay, but for us, it was only the idea of having some a place, an informal place, for people that don't have, um, an, that have a, a non-formal economy or that can produce something to eat or produce some artisans, for instance, can bring and present their products. Okay, as a way of making uh, them more empowered to, uh, well, maybe making something mo more. Uh, for a, or a large or wider uh, group of people, okay? But then we start the discussion and, and we real, realize that the market should be more than a simple and formal market or a regular market. It should be, could be more. We could co-create and speak with the other old people, with all the people involved in Urbinat, and we could think in, in a proposal much more focused on uh, solidarity, social economy, and we start to learn with each other about it, okay? So it, it was, um, it was, oh, this project is my, the, the other project, social project, I have to, Stick with the <laughs> okay. So we started in 2020 at the end of October 2020. So the pandemic was still there, and we still face We still go to the to the field with the you know with the masks, but we persist. Okay, and then we did until day today. We organized and. Uh, each uh, every last Saturday, 21 editions till now. So we do it each Saturday. Sometimes Saturdays was so much rain that we have to do it in a different way. So one of the, one of the, the ways that we discussed between us, between us, when I say when I say us, I say us, and also the people that present the products there on the market. Okay. Uh, we discussed how we can, how can we do it? Because it was in, you know, the landscape in the, the very near the, the place that Gonzalo showed you in, in the map before. How can we do the market with the rain? And one of the ways of doing it, it was to bring it on, on, on online, okay? And we started online. And we also decided that we have to com communicate more about the market. And we started our uh, social networks like um, a site or like uh, Instagram and li like Facebook. And we have different people running this kind of uh, materials because I don't know how to Instagram things, but some other people in the group know how to do it. And that's the kind of improv 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 improvisions that we did. Improvements, <laughs> okay. I said that my Portuguese is going to get <laughs> coming up. Um, okay. Thank you so much. <laughs> so nowadays, we can say that we involve 48 people, producer, producers, and they are biological producers. So we try, 
well, to bring also some thoughts about how to produce, how they they use the, how they make grow, uh, things grow, and we try try to to bring people that produce in an, a biological way, and also artisans with different kinds of um, stuff. Um, we also bring to the market some uh, associ association, culture, cultural and artistic presentations from the community. Okay, we have s many different sporty sports and cultural and dance uh, associations. So we try to bring them to this uh, uh, global um, uh, uh, floor where the market uh, is present. So main, many main challenges that we have, this involvement, this persistence that we have to have to get people involved. Not, not uh, uh, okay, they don't sell as much as they need or maybe as they want, but they realize that that's a place where not only the, the financial thing is important, but also the, the network that is, is came from there. And, um, and also it's a challenge, and still today it's a challenge, to have an agreement in the core team. Because we have a team, we have 48 people involved, but we have a core team, a, a people that each month discuss, evaluate, and keep the market alive. So we, uh, we still have to discuss some things about uh, uh, our social values, maybe, sometimes, okay? And we have to persist on this discussion. Um, also, a challenge is, well, Gonzalo will talk, talk about it in the last uh, room, about the fatigue. You know, it's a long pr process. Um, the expectations are quite different. And uh, some of them are, uh, well, uh, well solved. Some of them no, are not. So we have to persist on engagement. Um, we changed the market, so we, we started in a, in a very frontier part of the, the territory that's going to be in, that's going to be the intervention. And uh, now we are more in the square, in the central part, and we have to change it because of the weather conditions, but also because we we thought that maybe you can bring this market near the passing. Uh, uh, the normal, regular passing by for people that go go to do the the Saturday morning things that people do, and um, the municipality uh, and the local district, it's very difficult to get involved and get um, aligned with our values or, or with the kind of things that we want to do and preserve on this market. We we maybe we have to to bring it for a, to a more formal way of of being or more regular market but we we know that we are going to lose something in this process but maybe we have to nowadays the challenge is to uh, realize if what we are going to lose uh, is compensating the the things that we are going to gain okay so we are doing these discussions um, Tuesday. Tuesday is a very important. This Tuesday, <laughs> we are going to to keep the discussions open in the afternoon. Um, well, and also the sustainability, the attractive, and the visibility to grow in visitors. Uh, this is in Porto is a very touristic uh, town. As you've been there, it's a very nice town, not uh, so big that you cannot walk through it. Uh, but it's a very nice, but also it's uh, for that we have a lot of um, markets in the old city. And this one, we, to, we want to preserve a different identity. It, it, the name of the market is Camp Market. Camp Market means it's from the territory, that is Campagne. This is the, the beginning of the word, camp. And also it's because it's very... Um, is very connected with l the land. Okay, we do it in on grass. Okay, F children activities are on grass. Uh, we in, in, in the winter we have to use another kind of boots to go into the grass. But 
it's very uh, connected with land. So we have to keep it in this identity that we built together. We want to, to we want to keep it, but we don't know if we're going <laughs> we're going to achieve that. Uh, we are bit late so let's move to the last slide yes okay we had a very interesting things to say here but we we maybe we talk just two one second about the the, um, the importance of having on the same table the 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 citizens the associations and the chancellors so here are four chancellors that meet every three months to discuss also the needs of this market, how to make it sustainable, how to, how to keep it out of the Urbinat, after Urbinat. So this is something that was very important. We'll talk about this governance model in another session. Mm -hmm. And to, to conclude, because Igon is already a little bit nervous, yes. we just want to say, uh, underline uh, one or two of these topics. Yeah. Yeah. Isabel, do you want to Yes, two, maybe? okay. Um, it's very important to have a, a vision, a common vision, okay? We don't know if we have a real cohesion, okay? Or we can transform people's life. But uh, we know that in a, a persistent way, I will, uh, uh, I think I, the persistent organization group and the resilient particip participants and to feed this expectation, I think it, it's one of the things that I will uh, unlight. Uh, yeah, you, you, you mentioned many times the values, oh, yeah. which is something that yeah. the, the community really uh, fights for values that mm -hmm. need to be mm -hmm. kept. Yes, and, and needing to, to know more about another good pra practice. I think all of them, all of us must learn more about other examples, other good practice. All of them need to know more about social economy. Mm -hmm. So that's a, a thing that the group will be challenged to mm -hmm. do. Yeah. So just to say that our uh, the monitoring of our social impact is more with the voices, as with the voice of Isabel, than with the numbers. It's it's very difficult to arrive to numbers uh, in this in these projects, especially. Uh, uh, if we are just finishing the implementation. So I think the most important is using uh, qualitative uh, methods, putting uh, uh, the voice of the people uh, in, the, in the first, in the first uh, uh, page. Okay. okay, thank you. Well, you are, you are so uh, like inspiring. Yeah, too, and so inspiring that you get that is like uh, you yeah, I think now, uh, Johannes, is your, your turn. Yeah, I have a lot of reflections about your presentation, but uh, perhaps I will, I will go through them afterwards. <laughs> Thanks and welcome somehow in my living room, which is not really true, but I just live 10 minutes from here, and I have seen this place to evolve within the course of the International Building Exhibition. That's really nice to see you all here, and we're not far away from Neugraben Fischbeck, which was the project area of almost 20 interventions, I think it was, and I picked three to tell you about um, how monitoring and social impact kind of coincide and go together, because what you pointed out before, that numbers are one part, but stories and experiences are another, is very important to me, I think. So I will start with the temporary gardens at a refugee accommodation in Neugraben Fischberg, quite close to the metro station, but still on the brinks of a new dwelling. So there's a big um, housing development done by the International Building Exhibition. And there was an accommodation, still is, for refugees that had a barren area that was greened, but not very much usable. And so we thought about how can we use that place temporary, because it will be a park in the aftermath when it's redesigned and the whole um, yeah, housing district is finished, but we thought it would make sense to use it while the refugees are there and they are in need of finding um, higher quality in the green areas around the corner. There was a playground before, but we um, have come up with an idea of, yeah, using that area with so-called islands. And you see those wooden islands over here. Those islands have been um, 
crafted with a carpenter, a neighbor from the area, and together with the people that are accommodated in the refugee camp. And also, you see this big container up there. This is not a nature-based solution in itself, but it's very, very symbolic how to integrate people and how to symbolize that this is something special. And this was done with the so-called Kulturwohnzimmer um, Association. It's a group of young students that are um, with the Arts and Crafts University, and they came up with this cultural living room idea. Um, they are strong with graffiti, and they have worked together with kids to actually yeah, use that container that was there all the time, but it was not designed at that point, to point out this is a special place. And then you see on the right-hand side again, as I said, those islands, it's five islands actually, and they were built together with the people. Something that is very important to know about um, the refugee challenges that we have in uh, Germany and how to deal with it in a co-creational um, dimension, those people don't stay that long necessarily. You don't know how long they will stay. They don't know how long they will stay. And so how to get them involved and create something for maybe not only themselves, but with the ones that are coming over time was quite a challenge. Language barriers is a challenge. So we did monitor with questionnaires in German, English, Farsi, and other languages. And also we tried to attract to also activate especially younger kids um, by asking them to paint and draw what they think about the place, what's the qualities of the place, and there was the result of a brochure that was also portraying their perspective on the place. Um, also, this came in different languages. So you understand we did a lot of interventions, small-scale interventions that were opening up the space with a lot of co-creation, yet the monitoring is a difficult task to organize. Um, and we did conduct an interview with the director of the refugee accommodation for the pre-greening because we did not at that point have the people that would be co-creating, co-implementing with us. So we thought the interview would make sense to actually get an idea how he sees the behavior, the needs of the people on that spot. And then we, in the aftermath for the post-screening, conducted questionnaires with tenants. Also there we had translators, different languages with the questionnaires. Um, and the results, just a brief overview, were with the director's interview that green spaces are highly appreciated. So there was a need, but it was not able to be uh, articulated maybe beforehand. And also that the tenants are interested in co-creative approaches, but they need to know which they are and how they would be invited, of course. And then especially meeting places are missing. There is a lot of places, but the needs are very diverse. If you're a mother with three kids, it's another thing than if you want to do sports with a group of youngsters, for instance. And so we got an idea of the place to build upon with the intervention itself. And then we conducted those questionnaires with the participants of the workshops, especially, and the people that used the space afterwards. And as you can see, the post-screening results say, in general, the tendency is that they are feeling better, better, more healthy, and so especially the well-being, health uh, goals were, um, were tackled, and also the question of belonging and social cohesion were improving. So this was the first project. The second one is a school garden project and an aquaponics project. Uh, we had the co uh, Clever Action Lab schools. There was three schools involved, one secondary school, and we got an area, uh, not too big actually, but big enough for a school garden that was um, yeah, trying to integrate also permacultural approaches, which is kind of new, an underused area of a schoolyard that had been um, redesigned with the um, um, urban fund from the national and the federal states level beforehand. But we got like this area on the right hand side bottom you see, um, not too big, but uh, we did make a workshop. We had a workshop with school kids in 2019 and they built a very concrete model of the school garden. So it was very clear there will be a herb spiral. This is um, the parcels, this is the gardening plan, this is the plants that shall be put there. Um, and also we came up with the idea of two mobile um, aquaponics system. I think and hope that all of you are familiar with the aquaponics approach. Yes, no, <laughs> all right. So I will, I will tell you about the aquaponics later on a bit more. Um, 
Well, with the school garden, it was very important to get the KPI right, the key performance indicators for the monitoring. And it was a co-monitoring. So it was clear that teachers and pupils will be involved. Yet um, we had an LMP, a local monitoring plan, that we discussed in English. It needed to be translated into German. We had a, a theory of change workshop in 2019 where we invited the director of the school and the teacher that was very much supporting the idea of a school garden. He was taking responsibility and we together with them um, organized and decided upon the KPI for the school garden. We then translated that into the KPI for the aquaponics. An aquaponics system is a symbiotic system that tries to combine um, to grow plants while the plants filter the water for the fish that are beneath in this case. And so we have this um, setup. So up here you have a, a, a flower bed or a, a herbs bed or whatever you wish for. And then there's the um, yeah, the, how do you say, aquarium, something like, you can say that? I wasn't sure about that. <laughs> um, beneath, and so it's a circular system uh, where it's um, using very little ground for high production of um, plants, and the fish can float freely and swim and um, can be eaten, which we didn't say we want to have because it's a school and they have some sort of connection. Um, you see this axolotl, <laughs> which I 3D printed because in the participation process of the co-creation, the first idea for those aquaponics by the pupils was, let's have axolotls. Well, axolotls are protected, and if you have them in a school in Germany, Hamburg, and something happens, you will have the media covering that probably quite quite neatly and so because they had the wish and I have a 3D printer I said okay I'll print you some and give them to you with the inauguration so in each of the two mobile aquaponics there is a axolotl. <laughs> Um, all in all, six KPI were co-monitored by the so-called dedicated teacher. It's a weird term for a monitoring setup and the impact assessment, but dedication is definitely true with this guy. Um, so you see the herb spiral has been built co-creatively. You see the first uh, plants growing on the aquaponics. And um, with the KPI that we yeah, decided upon with the teacher, it was still not easy to, to get the results right because actually they found by themselves that some of the KPI don't really make sense. So one KPI was to measure the harvest in kilograms coming from the aquaponics. I think in this case it would be rather grams and not kilograms, so they said we don't even measure that, but what we measure is the biodiversity or the diversity of plants that we have put, so I will not go into the details of all of that, but you see they, they actually documented that they had planted in the garden and the aquaponics 32 different species and 1,862 plants. So this is something that tells us a story about monitoring rather than the kilogram harvested that they can't even really market because they made, yeah, kind of marmalade and those kind of thing, pesto out of it that they gave out um, against the donation in the school itself. The last uh, project is uh, so-called Verkhus, local production site. It's a volunteering group of people coming from the neighborhood which was active before and we wanted to build on their engagement by also adding the NBS, the nature-based solutions idea, and at the same time we wanted to empower them to really yeah, be active in the field to come up with results for because they focused on the um, public realms before. We wanted to foster that. So they knew about co-creation in a way. In Germany, we usually say participation, which doesn't necessarily include co-implementation, actually. But they were really fond of the idea, let's build together, let's do something. And the monitoring and impact assessment um, for two insect hotels, the result was two, because it said two insect hotels have been built. What does it tell us? There was no target value, there was no real number put in the first place. So um, I question if that is a good way of monitoring. And uh, we have discussed about it a lot uh, because I think uh, more in-depth monitoring for an intervention like this could be 
the level of engagement, like how often do they meet, who do they integrate, how intense and in depth is the conceptualization, how do they see NBS, how do they see co-creation, and how can we foster that, of course. And also especially the level of empowerment in the aftermath, because they came up with the idea to not only build insect hotels, they also built up an open-air cinema by themselves, they built the chairs with the youngsters, etc and the screen, and they showed movies that have, uh, um, yeah, that deal with the topic of nature-based solutions still. So they have kind of like integrated that into their works, even though Clever City is not really working on the implementation anymore. And they have learned definitely a lot about co-funding because they needed more money than Clever could give. And they learned about how the authorities work, how legal frameworks are always in the way especially if you look from the very local point of view, why is that regulation there? We don't need it, we don't want it. And so there was even sometimes a little sort of mediation coming from our side as Steg um, to, yeah, to secure the process, to make sure there will be a result. Um, and they learned sometimes the hard way how projects like these can be done. Um, and so from that point of view, I think it's a success story while the monitoring should be a little adapted in the end. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Johannes. Now we have a, a project representative that it was not the original planning agenda. So I would like to thank you, Miles, to be here uh, from Dortmund, just to tell uh, their experiences with our presentation. That is really a big challenge. So I open you to, if you want to come here to... Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I am Mais Jafari, and uh, I work at the city of um, at the University of Dortmund. I used to work at the city of Dortmund for the project uh, Progerec, and uh, my colleague uh, Ben Pulling is stuck somewhere in the transportation, so I will cover this part uh, about the uh, monitoring of social impact for Progerec. Uh, I worked for the part of Dortmund, but I'll try to give uh, an overview about the, um, let's say, theoretical framework of uh, the monitoring the social impact for the progeric. So just as in Hamburg, Clever Cities, uh, Clever Cities and uh, Urbinat, uh, when we, when we, we, uh, we have um, a comprehensive framework how to monitor. So it's nature-based solutions, and from the term itself, solutions. So there should be a question, there should be a problem we're addressing. So the thing we start with um, in, in the last uh, the presentation prior to me talked about the uh, theory of change. So uh, in the presentation before by Urbanat, they addressed some kind of uh, challenges addressed by the uh, European fr framework, su uh, such as climate resilience, water management, uh, green open spaces, biodiversity. Um, um, yeah, inclusive spaces, economic uh, uh, prosperity. So these kind of challenges addressed, how to measure them with uh, what have been discussed since yesterday, the uh, key performance indicators. And we have in Progeric around 28 um, NBSs. And we thought how we can measure different, the, uh, the social impact or the impact with its different uh, dimensions, so social, environmental, well-being, and ecological. So we have to think of uh, certain indicators for, certain, for the different NBSs. Yeah, so um, jumping now into the, uh, to the um, monitoring or the, the tools we use for monitoring the different, uh, the different indicators, if, whether it's environmental, social, well-being. So uh, something we had in common in, uh, with the Progeric, for example, the NBS general questionnaire, and I'll come to that into details. We want to measure the social impact before and after the implementation. Another thing we did, uh, economic labor market questionnaire, and we want to have the business uh, business impact dimension. So we use this uh, this tool in, in our NBSs: carbon impact, air quality, uh, air temperature, PM monitoring, uh, environmental footprint, biodiversity. So these these kind of uh, tools we uh, we use for measuring the impact. Uh, in Dortmund, we have 
different in BSs, so to make this more concrete, I will talk about different tools. At, we have the living lab level and the district level, and we want to have to, to measure both impacts at the smallest scale and the bigger scale. And at the bigger scale, we use the uh, general questionnaire, and this is something we developed pre-implementation in 2019, and then after implementation or post-implementation, we call it in 2022. And for the general questionnaire, we uh, distributed the questions or letters from the city of Dortmund. When I worked there, uh, I coordinated that part. And we sent this to 4,000 uh, citizens of the, our living lab. It's Horkadia district in Dortmund. And uh, yeah, with the hope that we receive at least uh, 600 uh, interested people to participate in that interview in these questionnaires. Unfortunately, we received like less interested people. So out of the 600 people we wanted to have originally interviews with, we managed to have 200 something like 200 interviews, but uh, f from from the whole district. So it's less than what's uh, what. Um, what was planned. Uh, nevertheless, for example, in other living labs, for example, in Zagreb, one of our sister uh, projects, they outsourced this, uh, this task for a professional uh, company to do this task, and they managed to have the 600 questionnaires uh, for that part. So there are some, I'll come to some challenges why we didn't manage to, to fulfill that number. But in the general questionnaire, we wanted to measure different aspects. Uh, some we were successful with, while others, it's still in the process now with the results. But what I can say about the general questionnaire that it, it, was, uh, it was comprehensive definitely, but it was too long. Uh, so people sometimes after 15 minutes, they, they might apologize not to participate or even cut the interview in the middle and say, oh, I, this is too long, although we informed this in the letters we sent to them. Uh, but at least with the successful ones, uh, they mentioned that the questions could get personal at some point, like when you, especially when you ask about health conditions and uh, what kind of diseases there are, all this con confidential, but still, again, it's adding to that, it's uh, facilitated by a third party, so it's not just they have to fill by themselves, and this is added to the, to the kind of uh, reluctance to continue the um, uh, the questionnaire. However, it was anonymous, Danley, so the, we uh, we coded the, uh, these uh, questionnaires, so th the names will not appear uh, besides the, uh, the city files, and this is, will not be shared with anyone. So this is something we monitored and, and I can uh, talk about. Um, yeah, just as uh, the colleague from the um, Clever Cities mentioned, there are some key indicators that are, they're not really necessary to be monitored or to be measured. For example, in urban gardening, we wanted to measure the environmental impact and uh, we, uh, we measured the uh, nitrogen dioxide and CO2. And for us, it was clear, like six raised beds uh, in, in, a, in a green area, and it's already forest. Uh, so what would be the impact or the significant impact of these uh, plants uh, on uh, nitrogen dioxide? So this is still in the analysis uh, phase, but we believe it will not have a significant um, impact on, uh, on the air quality. Air temperature hasn't changed. We measured, we measured this over uh, three years. And uh, we have the results for this. It hasn't. Uh, it hasn't changed. Um, yeah, something we can say about the monitoring. We did uh, a, a kind of systematic observation. It's called SOPARC. And with SOPARC, we, uh, with some NBSs like um, sport infrastructure or connection paths, we uh, we had students working with us and to do kind one week observation, systematic observation, and to see the number of users uh, uh, of these spaces. We noticed, of course, that like the number of users uh, increased in these areas. So this is something we can say the NBS um, uh, contributed to the to, to the inclusiveness and uh, frequency of users in these areas. Um, on the health impact level, we, we, we measure different things, but one thing for, we know for, uh, from the questionnaire that the stress reduction is, is part of what most people expressed about the, the installed uh, NBSs or constructed NBSs. It's uh, most uh, impact they notice on the, that they like to go to nature and it, it, it's definitely adding to the quality of their lives just to spend time in nature. Um, 
So I can, um, a little, of course, I can go th like through through different NBSs, but this is the talk would be an, on other aspects besides the social monitoring, interesting aspects. But I'll, I'll just keep it focused, especially not prepared. So uh, some of the uh, lessons learned from the monitoring. Um, so the monitoring and assessment plan should be part of the NBSS implementation. It shouldn't be added to it afterwards or just before. It should be really uh, thought of and uh, included in the implementation phase itself. So it's essential part of it. And uh, from our experience, uh, like significant resources should be allocated to the to the monitoring activities because it's really it's effort consuming and uh, human resource consuming. So you can't do it just within the uh, W w within that, the, um, as part of your uh, project doing other things, it should be a whole work, work package, and this is what we have it. It's a whole work package, and it actually, it's the biggest work package in our project. So, this should be considered from the beginning. Um, so for more successful monitoring, stakeholder uh, management plan should be integrated in the uh, assessment plan, especially we talked in the f former presentations about people with different ethnicity, with different languages, so it was difficult to, uh, to include them, and some apologize because they're, they're not really fit with the language. And uh, in Dortmund, it's, uh, it's a post-industrial part where we have these uh, projects, and most people, they have um, other origins, whether Arabic, Turkish, uh, uh, like workers uh, from the post-industrial uh, industrial uh, in the post-industrial part so uh, s for some of them it was difficult with the language and we had it translated from English only to German um, I can add to that the questionnaire should be customized to, to the local context. In, in our case, we had standard questionnaire, uh, meaning that it was implemented in all cities, translated from the like from English to the local language. But actually, same questions are asked in Dortmund, asked in Zagreb, asked in, in Turin. So, uh, and some questions are could be not valid, but um, this this is manageable, but can be considered from the beginning. Um, so another thing, if, uh, if a single NBS is not enough to address any of the key indicators, we recommend from the monitoring that to combine NBSs. And this is what we did in Dortmund. In, in some cases, it's not just one single NBSs. NBS, we combined, for example, we have a project aquaponic in the front area of the aquaponic. We, we did flowering meadow and in, uh, in, in the urban gardening, we, we combined this with, uh, with another NBS. So we, uh, we maximize the profit uh, of the NBS. I think I might be by... Um, yeah, and the last part um, uh, is about dissemination. So it's important to uh, provide a proof of impact. So I definitely believe uh, that monitoring is an essential part of uh, NBS implementation because especially with communication, you need to convince people like what's, what's the added value for you. And you need to have factual um, information. It's not just what we think, it's what's, what has been proven. So, uh, so definitely uh, provide a proof of impact uh, is, is a good uh, tool of communication uh, for NBS implementation in the future. And of course, one last thing, like it's a, it's a uh, learning curve. So you, whenever you, uh, uh, monitoring activities should be flexible, meaning that whenever you notice that this monitoring uh, tool is not, um, is not valid in this context, then review uh, your, uh, your monitoring plan. And if needed, just remove that, that, that tool or from that NBS and um, like it, it has to be flexible, definitely. So um, yeah, that's all from my side. Thank you. Would I ask the, for the audience to, to take notes of the questions because we are reaching the last uh, presentation and I would really want to emphasize the thank you for, for presenting because it was really, really impressive. You, you even have uh, enough time for preparing, but it's, it's like, like if you were prepared previously, really, really. It was really, really inspiring. Have a lot of uh, reflections regarding the, the concept that you have been sharing with us. So uh, I'm going to check if everything works well. Let's see. Yes. OK. That's it. So now uh, we go. We move to the last presentation. Uh, Luis Tejero from Madrid. Thank you. Thank you. 
So thank you, Igone, and thank you very much for the organization to having to give us this opportunity to Madrid to be here. Uh, I want to apologize too because you have a taste of Portuguese, English Portuguese, but pretty good, Isabel. But you are going to taste now a little bit of Spanish Portuguese, uh, Spanish Portuguese, no, the Spanish English. <laughs> I'm going to try to explain briefly uh, the experience of Madrid within the Clever project, uh, well, during five years yeah, already. Um, well, I have to emphasize that we are, we, uh, Madrid has been a fellow city in the, in the consortium, so we, we, in principle, we had a, a very small or a small or a low profile role in, in the consortium, but we tried to do the best, and although we didn't have the, the, the um, commitment of implementation, I hope in, the, in next year we will implement what you are going to see now. Uh, I'm going to focus a little bit on monitoring briefly, and, but uh, I think many of you don't know what we pretend to do in, in Madrid within the Clever 3D project. It's a clear, a very intuitive question. We want to create, to, to create yeah, a green corridor throughout a very depressed um, area in the south of the city. Uh, even before starting the project, we uh, start working to merging different plans of the city. Uh, I'm working at the Department of Climate Change of the, uh, of the municipality, but we got in contact with our, with our mates uh, with our colleagues that work on urban planning, and they already have thought on a green corridor crossing a, cr a neighborhood trying to regenerate this, this area. So we merge and we get together putting all the things that we did from the point of view of the climate change, because this area you can see here, sorry for it, I, I didn't bring any, any, any picture, but this is a very dense area without green infrastructure, and very, very hit by the hot and the heat during the summers. So we merged these two layers, and one more that was the green infrastructure plan. Because as I said, it, there was, there is a very, now you can see the green, but there's nothing of green there nowadays. So um, we have uh, clear that we are, well, the, the, as being a, a, fellow, a fellow city, we, we haven't money to, to implement. This project is going to be implemented with with um, with or well, I'll tell you tomorrow with the budget, municipal budget. So the money or, or the budget, the, the the support that we have from from clever cities was to do the things in a different way, and the different way mean in this in this question in this point to improve to in, to improve the technical definition, including the the innovation of nature-based solutions, to co-create to to. Go ahead in, in a question that is very hard in, the, in a city, at least in, in Madrid, but I think in, in most of the cities, to work in a not horizontal or transversal way because it's, it's amazing how difficult is it. And the, th and the third line of uh, or main axis we work on was the assessment, the environmental, the social, and the economic assessment. Those, were, those are the axes that usually we cannot do in the common days in the city because we are very focused on our projects and all these things are, are a part of these processes. Um, well, even a little bit before even the, the project we start with the Clever City project, we start trying to, to apply in the, in the project or in, the, in what was going to be a project, some indicators to see, to, well, to define what, what, is, what was going to be different in, in this case. And we try, for instance, to say, okay, we have to, we want to have more shadow in these in this streets, or we want to have less pavement, less solid pavement. So, uh, for instance, and then with the, with the help of the university, we start to, uh, um, to work on this um, battery or system of indicators to uh, start to shape what it will be the project in the, in the future, right? And here, well, sorry, it's in Spanish, <laughs> and I took this morning. But for instance, what was important is we, are, we were regarding the public space, taking into account that we wanted to take the cars out of this neighborhood and put more green and put more uh, biodiversity. That was the beginning of the indicators. And then we start, guided by, by the Cleaver Cities project and, and the, the front runners, we start to develop this uh, iterative process, which is the uh, monitoring to, well, uh, putting together, I think it's here, putting together a lot of people that were uh, working on the project. Uh, it was challenging when, when I 
when we w talk about co-creation, we can different, make a difference between the inner co-creation, I mean, with the department of your own uh, organization, and also the external co-creation with the locals, with the communities of the neighborhoods. Um, for the, we, we tried to put together also when we were, when we start to define the, the indicators um, system or uh, the monitoring uh, process. And um, we put all this department that we were together uh, in, the, in the same table, in the same room to define. I have to say that it was very, it's difficult for me. It's, it's so, it's, a, it's like a universe to enter in a new, new universe, the monitoring, because if we do want to have a very comprehensive analysis of these projects, uh, you probably are losing some uh, questions like, uh, I don't know, um, some, some colleagues of mine were very worried about if the water on the switch uh, system was going to be uh, very um, clear, but at the same time, we, were, we wanted to assess how the government was going to evolve. So we are having a lot of different indicators, which is at last very difficult to have a, um, well, a, a perfect tool for all of us. And then we start to work a little bit transversal. I have to say that the people, uh, the locals couldn't uh, enter a lot of in this, in this system because at that point the, COVID, the pandemic took place and then well, that relationship was impossible to have throughout a monitor. We, <laughs> you needed to have face by face and, and that was difficult. But at last, we achieved, um, a, well, a system of indicators. As I said, we tried to cover the three different realms. What, regarding the government, we wanted to know uh, if this project, uh, for instance, uh, was including the gender per perspective, sorry, if also was, um, I don't know, if, if this uh, project was really working tr in, in a transversal way within the municipality, and well, we, um, we create these three blocks of, of indicators, governance, environmental, which, re which gather the more technical um, indicators, and also the socio-economical uh, and health uh, indicators. Um, as I said, I think there, there are many things that can be out of here or some other things that can be mm, not well expressed or, or, or shown as, a, for instance, the quality of water or things like that, but it's impossible to cover everything. What we pretend is to have a tool that gives an overview, a picture of, of the projects. And in our case, from climate change and also from the, uh, well, the coordinator of this project, what we want is to create a tool to replicate to other projects in the, in the city, which for us was the most important thing. At this moment, we don't have any um, a, a monitoring tool in the city. So we are, for instance, working on the, on the schoolyards, or we are trying to refurbish some streets and put in mass green, more green, but we have not any system of indicator to assess if we if what we are doing, if we are in the same direction. So for the moment, this is good for us in order to have this, this uh, overview and at least all the muni different municipal projects put in the same, in the same directions. Um, well, this is true that maybe it sounds a little bit open, a little bit um, not very specific, but um, in some cases, and this is one of these cases, uh, we try to, to make a, a something more technical or something with a result more clear. Uh, and that was the, this uh, experience that we did with Technalia, uh, one other member or other consortium partner. And, and this tool, um, well, what it shows is that it, it measures how the different solutions of green you are putting in the streets are going to affect the, the microclimate, the thermal conditions of, the, of this realm, of this street. So um, it's a, uh, we have, a, I think we have some results here. We can uh, assess that when we put uh, without SVN, we have a, a, um, a, a, well, a surface, for instance, maybe you can explain even better than me, this, but, but well, you have an um, amount of surface um, below the, the thermal, the good thermal conditions, and when you apply SVN, then you have, uh, or NVS, yeah, 
you have a more extensive area when under uh, with uh, with uh, good conditions of in terms of of uh, heat or hot. Um, well, this is a, a tool that actually well nowadays we are applying to to other um, we want to uh, apply to other um, projects on the city. For instance, we are going to apply this in a, in the schoolyards of the of the city and also in other refurbished um, uh, initiatives that we are doing there. And well, I think it's more or less. I think it's that's all from my side. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for for all the presentation to the to the panelists. And I would like uh, to open the now the audience for any kind of questions. I have a lot of reflections, but I hope that you you have enjoyed the presentation and I already have taken notes of some of your of your insights, reflections, uh, questions, uh, elements or topics to raise into discussion. So, well, I don't know if someone how wants to to ask something. Yes. I don't know where he is sitting, the guy from Hamburg. Oh, there you are. Um, I, I like the projects. They, they seem very individual and uh, perfect for the area that they were made in, um, especially if they are co-designed by the people who, who live there. Um, but it did raise questions in my head for scalability um, because it is in the, the, the identity of individual solutions that they are not applicable to the, the whole city. Um, so my question is whether um, you, you took anything away from those projects that you can apply to all urban planning projects in the entirety of Hamburg and not just those specific ones. Yeah, that's a very important question that um, monitoring uh, will contribute to somehow because that's how we realize what is the effects and what is scalable also in terms of strategies, principles, etc. Um, well, the aquaponics is an interesting example because we came up with manuals that um, tell not only how to build it, like how to rebuild with kids these kind of devices, but also how to integrate this into the curriculum. So teachers would be having a hands-on uh, manual to really integrate that into their curriculum and also to pitch maybe for the, for their directors. I got a school class here or a group of pupils. I want to do this. This is how I can do it. So I got a manual for maintenance, for planning, building it, and also how to integrate it into the curriculum. This is um, kind of like open source. Um, something that is also important to talk about when it comes to the aquaponics is that um, why did that happen, this project? It came to be realized because the teacher had a private DIY aquaponics system at his place and he knew about it. So you need to also transfer this into other places. Um, and a friend of a friend of mine has studied aquaculture. So that's how things come uh, into place somehow. Uh, we did a tendering for the um, expertise, of course, and for the project planning, etc. But this is sometimes it's coincidence. And I think with the manuals that are open to the public to be downloaded, to be yeah replicated, is something that is a very easy and, and good way of upscaling and distributing the ideas. When it comes to the school garden, for instance, or the refugee garden, that's another question. But what we take away from it, I mean, we work as Steg all over Hamburg, in every county, in almost every neighborhood. And so also the, um, yeah, the institutional learning and expertise and experience that we gain from it is spread out within the county administration, within the Ministry of Urban Development maybe, within the um, Steg Hamburg. And so that's something that we also try to, to use to find the right networks to spread the ideas. Um, but it's not definitely you always have to have a container to paint upon with kids and have those islands being done by a carpenter or supervised by a carpenter from the neighborhood. It's more the principles and also the vigilance coming from it. Like, where do you look for people to do it? If you know the district well, you'll find always some people. Um, and if there's gaps and you need more expertise, you need to get it from outside. So I think we got like some, some strategic ideas of how to approach it, some means of monitoring. That is usually not the case. Usually you build stuff like that, not only with clever cities, but with a whole bunch of other institutions in Hamburg that are really uh, putting a lot of energy in it. But also the uh, monitoring will be something that we can be upscaled or um, yeah, also 
offered to others to think about their own ideas a bit more and or their own strategies maybe. Good, thank you. Yeah, well, just uh, adding as a reflection to continuing your, your question in terms of the Johannes presentation, I think that the co-monitoring activities that you have uh, developed can be something that can be replicable in another uh, places considering the specific contact context. And I think it could cover uh, two different goals. On one hand, gathering the data, but also engaging people and also on that sense improving to social cohesion, etc and creating a way to empower uh, citizens to, to gather data and to build a more participatory governance and, and also creating a good context for citizens' observatory approaches. So I think it's, it's something interesting that can be replicable into, into another uh, interventions. Uh, well, there is um, more questions in the, in the audience, please. Oh my God, <laughs> we have a lot. <laughs> Uh, first, thank you for the presentations. They were very interesting. I have a question in two parts. First, about the uh, uh, short-term assessment. Usually, the assessments that we saw are about the short-term impacts that we have. So what about the long-term? Because uh, especially in the city scale projects, we implement some issues, and then uh, we assess them in short terms. Usually, they are positive. And what about the long term? Do we have any frameworks in mind, especially both in the first and last presentation? The other part is about the uh, indicators and uh, negative parts. So we are assessing mainly the positive aspects, but we have the services, we have uh, s uh, effects that, for instance, gentrification may uh, appear in Madrid or in other cities due to the certain uh, interventions. What about them? Have we, uh, is there any experience of measuring them or any framework or an indicator and how we compare them to each other? Thank you. I don't know if someone of uh, the panelists would like to, <laughs> to answer to these challenging questions or I, I will break the ice. Yes, please. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'd like just to do a comment. I'm not uh, uh, working on the monitoring. Uh, it's it's another it's other colleagues, but uh, uh, for instance, in the case of of the Porto that we show this park that is is now being built, the the colleagues are uh, monitoring in some interesting way. One thing that they are monitoring uh, by drone, they are monitoring the construction, so they are. Uh, they are uh, taking pictures every month because it's a one-year construction. So they, they want to, with the drone, to not only to represent, uh, of course, the, the, the development, but also to, uh, for instance, do heat maps. Uh, uh, how, the, the firstly, uh, the situation gets worse because there was a green space, although with a lot of invasives and not cared, but it was green uh, and there was biodiversity. And with the construction of the park, we are going to lose all this. So the first five years will be almost a disaster in terms of evaluation. So we really need to think in, in 10 years or in 20 years. So the aim is to have this uh, uh, evaluation that will not only show the, 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 um, the progress of the, of, the, of the benefits that the park will bring in terms of nature, in, in terms of heat conditions, uh, and in terms of biodiversity. Uh, and, and, and this is something that has to be one of the, the dramas now that we are discussing is with the municipality, how we keep the academic teams involved to do this monitoring in 5, 10, 15 years, or if the municipality will have the, 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 um, uh, the conditions the, and the infrastructure to do this monitoring. And the other is the social impact. So we use this social observation. So we, we, we hire uh, uh, ethno, uh, to do ethnographic uh, uh, evaluation. So we hire a sociologist or something, someone from social sciences to be there in the field during uh, uh, some, several days in week, during let's say one month. And we w that's th that will be the easiest part when the park will open. We'll immediately see people using and crossing, I hope. And then, but we need to see this in, in a long term. 
because on the other side of nature, probably people will use it uh, a lot in the beginning because it's, it's something new, but we want to keep the level of activities and, 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 uh, and, um, and level of use in, in time. So we also need to hire this social lens uh, in also in five, 10, 15 years. So it's, it really has to, we have to have the commitments of the academics, but we also need the support of the municipalities. So the solution is not designed yet, but we are working on that. Adding just an, a minor reflection regarding this, and I will open now the, yeah. It's a, a, to talk about the scale in terms of long term, it's quite uh, interesting to, to to use the different scales. I mean, if you are in a, in a pilot intervention, the scale is going to be very detailed. Um, to maintain this in a long term, probably you have to open the, the scale to a broader one. And then regarding the trade-offs, I don't really know any kind of monitoring uh, schemes or, or re in relation with that. But one thing that probably is important to reflect on is that about the, uh, perhaps the trade-offs are not related directly with the MBS solutions, but with the intervention per se. So it's important trying to avoid sending negative uh, messages of intervention that probably has not to be really with nature, but with the way that the intervention has been designed, just uh, as a reflection. Uh, I think that there is a question from you, and then I will already say it's relating with this one. Okay, so I, and then I, I will open the, sorry. Sorry, uh, my name is Marina uh, Trentin. I come from uh, uh, Clever City uh, in uh, Milan. Uh, I only have one, uh, more reflection to add uh, to, to this is that if we, and, and this is a, a question we uh, we used also in the monitoring team of uh, uh, of Clever. So, why did we sometimes decide to use the theory of change? Because you go and try to measure a change, it means that it it can be good or bad depending on the point of view, of course. But you may try to measure a change, an impact, some way. Uh, this means that uh, uh, you try to put on uh, um, feedback approach. So if anything is going in a way that you decide to be, that you inside your team decide to be in line with your expected outcomes or not in line with your expected outcomes, then you can stop, get back, try to understand where something changed in, in a way you don't want, and then uh, try to uh, modify the approach. Of course, you can't do this in a short time, short time is five years, but you can set up um, a way of measuring and understanding the change, so uh, the modifications you are, um, you are working on for the medium time, and um, and plan for uh, medium long-term monitoring system. So this is uh, very far from what we're used to in uh, environmental um, in environmental monitoring, because when you monitor environmental impact, usually you know that this is happening, you measure it, and eventually you set up a feedback system so that anything is happening. But when you work on change, you are not me only measuring impacts, you are, change, uh, you are trying to measure what is induced. And of course, this is tricky. This is more difficult on the long term. It is not immediate, for example, to be communicated to European Commission when you have a, a European project, of course but uh, it allows you to open the black boxes, understand what's happening inside, and try to understand the mechanism uh, by which uh, your change is happening. And this is really important in uh, what happens at social and economic uh, level, because those are changes, are not just you know, an impact that you, ooh, okay, temperature rises, temperature decreases, or, um, for example, uh, as uh, the colleague from Hamburg was saying, uh, you are planning to build uh, an insect hotel, you have one. Oh, good. You have a good impact, but which kind of insects are going to stay there? Is it really populated by the insects you are looking for? 
So that is uh, not the direct input, but the change you are creating in your ecosystem. And that is what you would like to measure. So in that case, you go and measure biodiversity from an environmental point of view, and you measure who was involved in building the hotel insect, uh, the hotel for insect, or uh, who was involved in uh, uh, changing, in working, who was really engaged in, uh, because in that case, the engagement makes a long-term purpose. Uh, thank you for all the interesting presentations. My name is Ilkka Bäänänen and I come from Finland, from Lahti, the winner of European Green Capital 2021. And I have two questions. First, the easy one to the host city. Uh, if I'm right, did you mention that there were 20 different projects in Hamburg? Yeah, and I'm, I'm interested in how these 20 were selected, who chose them, how you choose them? Um, yeah, it was round about 20. Um, don't pin me down on that. Um, it was some, some of these projects have been um, thought of before, of course. They were in the pipeline, let's say. Others were very incrementally um, developed over time. I mean, the ideation phase was 2018 midst of 2018 and I think late 2019 we've started to say this is our list and then also some projects don't um, really start off in the way you think about it some pop up in the course of time because you talk to stakeholders conditions change etc so it was a rather dynamic project especially in the beginning um, but I think yeah, it's very hard to say, like half of the ideas were probably there before, kind of, and the other half popped up because you're starting to do things, basically, yeah. Okay, thank you. The reason why I ask it, it was because we have in Lahti, we have a list and we have a method of um, participatory um, budgeting. People, or the citizens, they can vote. There's a long list and then there's a budget also, and then by voting, those which are going to be implemented are selected. Okay, thank you. And now maybe the not so easy one to our <laughs> first presenters from Portugal. Um, you mentioned that you are not experts of the monitoring, but I believe the topic of this session is monitoring. So this is that's the reason why I ask about the evaluation, the methods, how you, and in, in general, how in these projects funded by European Commission, uh, the added value is evaluated in different levels, not only in, in, in individual levels, but also in the city level, the national level, and in European level. Maybe this is open question to all the participants, but yeah, that's what I'm interested in. And I know it's not easy to say one method, but anyway, your thoughts about that? Yeah. No, I, uh, I said I, myself, I'm not a specialist. I have, I have a, a specialized team <laughs> on the working on that, also a work package. Yeah, I can call them. So unfortunately, they, they could not come, so I'm, I'm representing them. Uh, but, uh, um, yeah, we, we have, uh, in our work package, we have several dimensions and, and we have specific teams working on uh, health and well-being impact that is mainly mostly by a survey. So it's a survey that was agreed between all the cities and we passed the survey before and after the implementation. Okay, So it's a survey related to the way you use the public space uh, in terms of, uh, um, of physical health, let's say, but also the way it impacts on, on your uh, um, social, uh, social health. So we try to approach the different levels of health um, and these will give us as before and after in terms of qualitative impact of this. Of course, for, to have these, uh, uh, it's important that the, the, we have time to do the monitoring and this is something that uh, with the delays that we had in the projects, it's something that 
is, uh, um, I would not say that is in danger, but we will have a reduced time for that, and that's an issue because it's something that we would like. We, we had in our timeline one year to do the, all this evaluation, and uh, now we will have to do it in three, four months. Okay? Uh, we have also the economic evaluation that works with the social return uh, uh, impact. So we'll try uh, to evaluate uh, what are the economic uh, uh, benefits of, 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 uh, of, the, of the project, although those benefits cannot, may not be uh, evaluated in terms of, of um, it, it can ha we can the social return uh, investment it gives you other benefits than than the economic than the uh, related with money you know so there is a team specialized on this and that that is and trying to understand what are the ben benefits related with this theory and one thing that is very important that is to monitoring the co-creation process uh, uh, so this is an ongoing process to monitoring how people are involved and, and what is the level of, of engagement, what are the constraints, if they feel involved or not, if, the, if there is, uh, uh, what is the level of participation that they, they could achieve in each phase of the project. So this is, we, 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 we need also to look to the process and not only to the final results. Uh, and the other dimension that, that will be discussed uh, tomorrow in the next session on social impact, that is the governance that I approached slightly, that is how the, the, we could uh, achieve a, a co-governance model uh, with our, in our cities, with the municipalities, the academics and the stakeholders. How could we revise the governance of the NBS towards a more democratic uh, uh, platform of decision? Uh, so, these are, uh, um, and then we have the environmental one that I talked a little bit. So this is, in fact, a concern. Uh, also, our cities, as, as the colleague from Madrid, he, he mentioned that uh, it's something that the cities looked with a lot of interest because we, it's something that in the everyday of the municipalities is very difficult to do. And they see this is where we want to put our eggs, let's say, in the final phase. We, we really want to, to understand if we did has an impact or not. So this is a concern, it's, it's difficult to achieve, and, and, and in fact, as it is the last phase of the project, there is a, ri there is a risk, a serious risk of losing these important moments, uh, I would say. So thank you for your question, but it's a difficult one. So, <laughs> so thank you. I, well, I can continue doing a lot of uh, different reflection regarding the session, but I think it's time to close because all of you are thinking in, uh, in coffee. <laughs> so thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have some, I don't know, some flavor, taste the flavor of our monitoring activities in our sister projects. And perhaps you, you have some ideas to be then applicable to your own context. So thank you very much. And if you have any kind of comments or whatever, please uh, search for, for us in, in the coffee time and we can continue the discussion. Thank you very much.